Hey people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense and this is my playlist on bleeding and coagulation disorders. Today we'll talk about direct thrombin inhibitors and factor 10A inhibitors, anticoagulants baby. So let's get started. As you know, coagulation involves vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and fibrinolysis. How to destroy primary hemostasis? Use antiplatelets. How to tamper with secondary hemostasis? You can use anticoagulants. We have talked about all of the antiplatelets in previous videos in this playlist. And now we're here. Heparin is done. Warfarin is done. Today, it's time for direct thrombin inhibitors and factor 10A inhibitors. So let's get into this. This is your beloved coagulation cascade or secondary hemostasis. Direct thrombin inhibitors will inhibit thrombin directly. Thrombin is also known as factor 2A, A for active. 2 without A is the prothrombin. Next, factor 10A inhibitors will inhibit factor 10A. When you give thrombin inhibitors or factor 10A inhibitors, the end result is we cannot convert fibrin into fibrin, we cannot stabilize the fibrin fibers, we cannot form a stinking thrombus. And that's why they are anticoagulants. We have discussed heparin and warfarin before, so please go back and watch my previous videos. Now, it's time for direct thrombin inhibitors. If you have watched my earlier video on HIT, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, I've told you that we treat HIT by stopping the heparin and then hitting me with argatroban or lipiridine. These are direct thrombin inhibitors, if you remember. Argatroban, dabigatran, lipiridine, bivalirudine. It's very musical. Argatroban, dabigatran, lipiridine, bivalirudine. Why do we call it troban? Because it's a thrombin inhibitor. Thrombin ban. So, mechanism of action. They directly inhibit thrombin. Oh yeah, they are called thrombin inhibitors. No duh. Which will inhibit conversion of fibrin to fibrin. Okay, this will inhibit the secondary hemostasis. That's why they are anticoagulants. There is no need to activate antithrombin 3. Unlike heparin, which had to stimulate antithrombin 3 first. These direct thrombin inhibitors were first isolated from the saliva of leeches. Oh my goodness, these scientists are bored. Imagine being a scientist. I will specialize in leeches. Not just leeches, the saliva of leeches. Not just the saliva of leeches. I'll try to find a protein within the saliva of leeches that can be used to inhibit secondary hemostasis. Get a life, dude! But this bored person has done us a huge favor by discovering argetroban, dabigatran, lupirudine, bivalirudine, because before this, het patients used to die from heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which actually causes thrombosis. Indications of direct thrombin inhibitor. We use them for HIT. We use them for PCI. What's PCI? Percutaneous coronary intervention. Stroke, venous thromboembolism. How do we monitor them? Remember, how did we monitor heparin? Using PTT. How did we monitor warfarin? Using PTINR. How do you monitor argetroban? Using PTT. How about bivalirudine? Using ACT, activated clotting time. How about dabigatran? None, absolutely nothing. Side effects of any anticoagulants include bleeding, of course, such as hematuria, GI bleed, etc. Contraindications, don't give them to a patient who is allergic or has hypersensitivity. They can cause hypersensitivity pain. Don't give argetroban if the patient has liver failure. What should I do if the patient has liver failure? Go with bivalirudine because bivalirudine is B9 on the liver. If the patient has kidney failure, do not give dabigatran or lipiridine. What's the antidote for dabigatran? Something called idarucizumab. If it ends in MAB, it's a monoclonal antibody. If it has a ZU, it's a humanized monoclonal antibody. If it has C or CI, it means it's something related to cardiovascular. Imagine my shock. Pharmacology makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So, idarucizumab is a monoclonal fab fragments or antibodies against the bigotran and against its metabolites, namely the acyl glucuronide. Get a life! Let's talk about factor 10A inhibitors. Look at the name, rivaroxaban. It will ban factor 10A. Oh my goodness, pharmacology is so difficult. Shut up, dude. The name has the answer. It's just your professor is so woke. Apixaban, edoxaban, factor 10A inhibitor. 
Beautiful. Function, anticoagulants. Oh yeah, they ban factor 10A. So they directly inhibit factor 10A, which will inhibit the conversion of fibrogen to fibrin. And as you know, this will inhibit secondary hemoses. That's why they are anticoagulants. There is no need for AT3 stimulation. Indications, DVT, PE, and stroke prophylaxis. This has rapid onset and these are oral medications. Now contrast that with warfarin. Warfarin was also an oral drug, but it had a slow onset. Side effects of an anticoagulant is bleeding, no kidding. Also, you can get epidural or spinal bleed on spinal puncture. Contraindications, allergy or hypersensitivity, do not give it to patients with renal failure, especially if they have end-stage kidney disease and they have a P453A4 enzyme interactions. So please be very careful with drug-drug interactions. The antidote, no specific antidote. So factor 10A inhibitors mnemonic, look at this X. X, just say no. No need for antithrombin-3. No lab monitoring requirements. You do not need to monitor using PTT or PT or whatever. No use in renal failure. There is no specific antidote. Just say no. If you want to take your education to the next level, bring a blank piece of paper and compare between heparin, warfarin, direct thrombin inhibitors, and factor 10A inhibitors. These are all the anticoagulants. And then compare among them based upon the examples in each class, the mechanism of action, the clinical indication, the side effects, the contraindications, the drug-drug interactions. You can even add the route of administration. But I don't want to do this table. It's up to you. Just don't cry to me when you kill a patient 10 years from now. I freaking told you. Why do I sound like an angry old guy at a banana republic? So please go and finish the table. But before you go and do that, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com, get you a cardiac pharmacology course. You have 50 videos, 25 cases with answers, 25 questions, notes, and even a mind map. It's time to take your education seriously. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com to get my cardiac pharmacology course, my antibiotics course, and even 50 cases about bleeding and coagulation disorders. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.